Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Michaela, and today I have a very special guest on the channel. Her name is Ashley Emig. On social, she goes by Ashley's.testimony, and we actually found each other on TikTok because we have a very similar story on how Jesus saved us from the new age. So today we are telling all, we're pulling back the veil on what's really behind these teachings and we're sharing our advice for those who are new in their walk with Jesus. So without further ado, let's get on to the conversation. Hi! How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's so nice good. to finally like connect with you, you know, face to face. <laughs> I completely agree. It looks like we're wearing the same color today too. Yes, I love that. How <laughs> synchronized. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So I wanted to preface with saying that last week was my first live that I did with um, a friend here on Instagram. And I did a lot of the talking. So today I was hoping to hear more of your story if you're okay with, with sharing that. Yes, yes, definitely. Of course, I'd love to just share um yeah like I'll start by just like sharing where um like because my journey to Christ like kind of happened um like I would say that I had an encounter with him years ago like maybe in like 2017 where I did I was like praying and asking for help and I wanted to know who God was and yeah so I and I was going through just I was in so much emotional pain I was like grieving my father had been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer at this time and like all my like daddy issues were kind of coming to the surface and I just was not in a good state like health wise either I was very overweight um and then that same year I was kind of diagnosed with type 2 diabetes so I was like literally just having like a crisis <laughs> like uh -huh. an emotional crisis like health wise so yeah. I would say that um, my journey to Christ has really been about um like health like mental health because my mental health at that time too I was like having panic attacks and yeah I was just not in a good state and I was all over the place um now was this while you were in the new age or was this before the no. new age yeah this was like this is kind of what led me into new age because I was like kind of praying and like I have no like to give kind of background I have no upbringing with like uh you know Christ or going to church I I did have friends like that I went to church with in middle school you know like so I kind of knew what Jesus was all about or what you know kind of what Christianity was but like I don't I didn't grow up we didn't talk about God we didn't have a lot of faith I grew up with a lot of like trauma a lot of abuse like psychologically mm -hmm. um physically verbally sexually like experienced a lot of trauma in those ways and so like I was saying when <laughs> when my father was like being diagnosed because he was also part of my trauma right he he created a lot of um he wasn't a God centered man. Right. So he wasn't mm -hmm. like the enemy was basically in our home. There was so much dysfunction. I'm yeah. I'm like the epitome of like dysfunctional family. Okay. Like, but like on this outside and like maybe on the surface and maybe to other people, it seemed okay. Like they did. I would say that my parents did a really good job of like putting on a charade and it's not mm -hmm. like they were always bad. You know, it wasn't like it was always terrible all the time. We would go through these stints where it was like, we would have really good times and it would yeah. last maybe like it could be like months or maybe even a year and then everything would like blow up and then my parents would like break up they would never like get divorced but they would split out my dad would move out or my mom would move out and they would get back together and this just went on and on until I was like a until I was in high school and then my parents finally did get a divorce but even then it was still like they couldn't really let go of each other it was like so toxic you know yeah. like like it was all they knew and so like it was just a mess like if I can say one thing it was just a mess and um so anyway like I said I didn't grow up with any of that background but when my dad did get sick with the cancer like that was like my rock bottom moment like my foundation like my foundation was just crumbling right before my eyes because I had like this clear vision and like my father was in it and even though it was unhealthy and our relationship wasn't the greatest at that time, he was still that person that I loved and cared for. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he was the only person on the planet that loved me um, at this time in my life, just because I didn't have a lot of, you know, I wasn't in a relationship. I, I mean, I had close friends at this time that were so great and so loving, um, but also those relationships, because I was in a different state and I was really in this unhealthy state, those relationships, like those friendships were very, I don't want to say they were necessarily toxic but they weren't very healthy either you know because they were based 
in like unhealthy habits. So um, yeah, I started to pray. I didn't know what I was necessarily praying to, which is the tricky part because, you know, if you're not praying to the Holy Spirit, if you're not pl- praying to Christ, you're going to be hijacked spiritually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And since, since I didn't have any sort of spiritual discernment at this time in my life, I was just like calling out. Right. And I was like, calling yes. out to the universe. And you yep. know who answered. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love the point, like these bodies are vessels. If it's not filled with the Holy Spirit, something's going to come in and fill it. Right. Yes, exactly. And there's so many spirits, right? And like, there's only, I always see it, like, this is what really helped me when I was coming out of the new age is seeing that there are tons of spirits all around, right? But there's only one Holy Spirit. All the other spirits are <laughs> unclean, you know? And so that's why I like, because I was like, yeah, when I, especially when I got into new age, I was like, you know, doing all the tarot and connecting with my ancestors and my guides and my angels. And I was like, you know, I was constantly around these, these spirits, but, and I thought they were light. And that's the thing is like, you know, Satan, he masquerades as an angel of light, you know? And so I think this is what happened to me. Actually, I know it is like when I look back now, like now that I've been saved out of it, I see so clearly, but at the time he did come to me as this angel of light. So it was like so weird because I was praying out to know God struggling emotionally and at this time in my life I actually was I had met a new friend that I met through a new job that I had gotten and she went to church regularly regularly she was raised Baptist and so I decided to start going to church with her I was guided to like read the Bible I even got my own Bible I was like going to church and like praying for my father at this time because I didn't know what to do and I was like okay yeah this must be it you know (laughs) um and then uh it was just so weird because at that time too, it was like, I was also being presented this other route. I got really into like, it was like I was online and I was seeking love. I was seeking, like, I really wanted a relationship. I really wanted to find a partner and like a soulmate. And then I got really sucked into like, I don't know if you've heard of the concept of the twin flame, if you knew that. In yeah, way. of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. <laughs> I thought I had one too before. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I became so obsessed with this because I was in this place of like really just wanting love, you know, and now I see that it's because I was designed to be in a godly marriage and to be in a godly relationship and to also just have a relationship with Christ, period. You know, (laughs) that's what I was seeking. And that's why he came to me and was like, read the word, read the Bible, go to church with your friend, you know, like, this is it. And I was like, no, there's got to be more. And so then I started diving really deep and the whole twin flame thing led me into energy healing, aligning my chakras. And I became obsessed with the chakras and Mm -hmm. I considered myself an energy healer. And so yeah, I got really into like meditation, visualization, yoga, like all the way. An child. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I truly believed I was a star seed. I got really into that. Like, and I was having this like thought today, even that was like, sometimes it can be hard to be a Christian because like you're, you know, you're you're sharing your faith and like you're believing in Christ and like, you're like, he is real, you know? And like, but then like, maybe they, people don't always believe that. But like when I was in new age and saying to people like, yeah, I'm, I'm an alien. Like I'm, you know, I'm from a different planet. Like, and that's like totally acceptable and like not crazy at all, you know? So it's so weird. It depends on who you surround yourself to, who you surround yourself with. Like if you're around a bunch of people that believe that and then it confirms it for you and you're and then you're all thinking that you're aliens and you're like, yeah, like what is this earth even? (laughs) I totally totally thought the same thing, you know, and then I later found out it was demonic spirits that were I learned a lot about the forbidden fruit. And when you have all these questions and you're seeking answers you're seeking to understand the world and the spirits and god but you're looking outside of the bible that is literally the example of eating the forbidden fruit because these yeah. spirits they, they want they ha- they're ready with an answer they have an answer for you yeah and you really are connecting with something supernatural but like you said there's only one holy spirit yeah. only yeah. one way of truth you know they they have all these other answers but it's not the truth and it's so like I always felt like in the new age, it's like the, the path is so broad, whereas like it tells us strictly in the Bible that the path to life is narrow and that the path to death is very broad. Like, and there's so many different paths you can take in new age. And that's kind of what happened to me when I first was like being saved and coming out of new age. It's like, for me, I kind of felt like overwhelmed. I was like, 
there are so many different paths. Like there's, there's yeah. so much, you know, but we're as in Christianity and the, and the, the path of the Holy spirit in the Bible is very, there's only one way, you know? And oh it's my simple. God. It's yes. So simple. He Whereas like New Age, on solid ground. Yes. Yes. And like, there's, it's so complicated. I felt like in the new age, there's like, and I would even like explain like new age teachings. Cause I considered myself a spiritual teacher because like, the more I got into these uh, practices, like, I'm not going to lie that these practices, a lot of them in the new age were what I thought were helping me. Right. But now I see that they're like false wonders so that they still work. Those, those things still work in the new age, but you're just not connecting with the Holy spirit. Like you're not connecting like those wonders and those things that are happening aren't necessarily being done by God, even though you're under the delusion that, that is God, you know? And so it's so, it can be so challenging to discern, right? And discernment is key. And I felt like when I started reading the Holy Bible and I had been like anointed with the Holy Spirit is that's when I really uh, was able to discern spirit. And I feel like that's definitely one of the gifts that uh, God had given me, but the enemy was using it basically against me. Mm -hmm. was using it for tarot, gotcha. was using it for, yeah, was using it for mediumship. I thought I was clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, and claircognate, you know, but like now I still am able to discern spirits. I'm just able to discern, okay, this, uh, this is coming from the Holy spirit. This is coming from like a demonic spirit, you know? And like that really helps you discern what is truth and what is lie because just like you were talking about with the forbidden fruit, like the lies are so alluring. Like that's why Eve gave into the temptation, you know, it's like, there are so many lies in the new age, but it's mixed with truth, you know? And so yeah. it's really hard to discern if you don't have the eyes of the Holy spirit, you know, you're going to be easily yeah. deceived. It reminds me of this point too, that Satan is not creative. Okay. Like God is the creator. Satan doesn't create anything new. He takes what God already made and he twists it a little bit. So it does. It almost looks like the truth, but it's not. Right. Yeah. And I think there's like also a verse in the Bible. I don't have all of them memorized because honestly, I'm still like a baby Christian, you know, yeah. like, I'm still learning. But like, when I'm reading these things, it's just like speaking to me so clearly. But it, there's this part where it says, like, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, mm -hmm. and that's, that, that makes sense with with Satan, because it's just, there's a counterfeit. Like, yeah, you're right. God is the creator and he creates things. And then Satan, he counterfeits like he's just like, yeah, like he can't create anything original. Everything is just yeah. like, like you and said, you know it's just like a counterfeit. About that? when you're in the new age, you think that you're so evolved. Like you have this like, intellectual superiority, it's pride, which is the deadliest, yes. but it's, it's this pride that you're just so much smarter and more evolved than everybody else. And everybody else is just so far behind and they've just never seen this new way of thinking. And you just have so much ego about it really. And, you know, when I read that verse in the Bible too, that there's nothing new under the sun and I started to piece together like new ageism, it's not new. It's just modern day right. Paganism. It's the same paganism that was happening way back then. You know, it's, just, it's, it's shaped a little bit different with different cultural trends in right. each generation. Yeah, it's like new age, but old lies over and over again. Like he just repackages it in shinier packaging, like, like you said, to, mm -hmm. to appeal to the next generation, what's ever going to suck them in. Because even if you look back into like, what was it like the 70s when people were like really like hippie hippie children you know it was kind of like the same concept it was happening then but now it's just like happening now but in a completely different way like with the crystals and like the affirmations and the self-love and the self-healing because that's what I was really getting into is like I was seeking healing I was so unwell like I was saying mentally emotionally and physically and so these things like yoga and meditation and visualization and affirmations and self-love it all really appealed to me and i thought that yeah. it was working oh and inner child healing i was so into oh me too the world. bro <laughs> yes. yeah yeah i like i thought it was working you know and like they're worth like i'm saying there are aspects of it like mm -hmm. um attachment styles and learning what my attachment styles are really did help me learning how to regulate my nervous system you know but now it's like i can go about it in a way that's more holy spirit led rather than like needing to go into these elevated states of consciousness or constantly do these breath work journeys or like doing like screaming into a pillow or like yes. shamanic like 
animalistic healing. Oh my to express goodness. myself. It sounds like we went on the same kind of weekend retreats back when we were new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so oh my gosh yeah. it's so wild to see like when I when you're in it that like you think that this is it you're like you were saying it's the pride it's the spiritual ego that's what mm-hmm. I always thought because I was like oh I'm like so much more spiritual than everyone else like I have yeah. all this 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 hidden knowledge right and that's like hidden knowledge it is. yeah and that's what it is it's it's <laughs> it's so deceptive because we aren't meant to know that knowledge. That knowledge does exist, but God intended us not to know that. That's why he asked us, that's why he asked Eve and he asked Adam to not eat of that fruit, you know, because he knew what it would do, you know? And then even in Genesis, when it talks about like when they ate of the fruit and then they start to, they started to feel shame, you know, Mm -hmm. because they were pure before. And, you know, and then Satan can kind of use that and he can kind of bait you. And then this leads you into all these different, like, uh, these sinful paths, you know, that, that look so like they're healing you, but they're yep. really just like re-traumatizing you, you know, and uh-huh. it's creating so much more, like you said, pride and shame and, and keeping us from, and from God. Yes. It's like eternal separation and it's so yeah. heartbreaking. And I was so into that idea from the twin flame thing, like the twin flame separation, not knowing that that is totally a counterfeit for like one flesh and and like a, a covenant yeah. of you know like a godly marriage and that's what exactly. I was seeking yeah and so and like also the inner child healing like that's so, totally a counterfeit for like having a relationship with the father the heavenly father you know and I was trying so hard to be my own father and it, it just wasn't working like I how could you be your own mother your own father and your own inner child like that just seems I mean, I can understand the concept psychologically and I can understand that like the inner child is kind of like our emotional selves. But like for me, I found that I did inner child healing work when I was in new age because I was only in new age for probably like, I don't know, maybe a good like four and a half years, like really into it. Maybe even just like four years really into it. So I know that's like not that long. Yeah, it is. But for some people, I hear them like they're in there for like 10 years. (laughs) I'm just like, but maybe also because of my upbringing, I was also into it, but I didn't know it, you know, like the occult and like, cause I grew up in a very secular household where I was like constantly absorbing uh, worldly images. And that kind yeah. of is occultic, you know, like, so I kind of was in it my whole life, I guess. I just didn't really know it. It wasn't until I got really into those like practices that I was like, wow, like, <laughs> you know, this is it. I thought this was it. Um, I have this know, same because while my parents called themselves Christians, my mom was also doing Ouija boards and my dad was dating girls that were doing tarot cards and we were still going to church, but all these occultist things were in my environment where I, it became kind of normalized. And that's the same way I see it on social media too. I see these people that are, that profess Christ, they profess that they're Christians, but then they're also doing the tarot cards and checking their astrology and, you know, wanting to collect the crystals. And I think like to a certain extent, like, you know, I kind of want to ask you this too, like to a certain extent, sometimes crystals, they're just pretty, you know, but when you begin to like seek your healing in them and you put your belief in them, that's where it becomes an idol. Right. Like they're mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. And that was actually one of the last things like, for me, it's been like a process. It's not something that just kind of happened overnight. Um, because when there was that like movement on like Instagram of a lot of like new age people coming to Christ, um, I was triggered by this. Like there was a couple people that I had like looked up to that maybe I was even um, saw them as they were kind of like an idol for me, you know, and when they were coming out of new age, and they were professing Christ, like, I was like, no way, like, I want to keep I was doing like a tarot blog at this time. And you know, I had my crystals and like, I was just like doing the, the chakra healing. I was so into it. And I was like, no, like, I'm not giving this stuff up. Like, I thought this was my life purpose to be doing these things, you know, so, so much pride. <laughs> yeah. And I see now how, how because I still feel like getting on here, sharing um, the gospel, sharing the word of God, speaking with other women, like that is part of my purpose. But I see now how Satan totally twisted I, it. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Once again. Yes. We've got a consistent theme here going on. Like he yes. just tried to hijack everything, and that's mm-hmm. 
it's so powerful to God's redemption because when he does redeem you, you don't have to let go of that gifting that you were so excited to use. No, you get to use it now for God's glory. The and same thing so much, you love to do. Yeah, and like it's so much, um, for me, I've noticed like there's so much less less pressure. Like when I was at, oh. at the end of like, like um, at the end of like kind of being saved and like having that moment of coming to Jesus and like kind of like, in quitting all these things I was doing, I was feeling this annoying feeling of like, no matter how much content I produced, no matter how much I was doing, like I was sharing my poetry, I was sharing my blog, I was doing all these things. And I was just annoyed that nobody was like interacting with it, you know, and I would get so upset because I was putting my whole worth, putting all my worth and all my value into this, you know, and now like when I'm creating things, I'm not creating it for the people necessarily on Instagram. I'm creating it for God. And that's made such a huge difference. Yeah. So I was trying to remember this Bible verse about anything that you try to build when you're not in Christ will eventually crumble. And I I wish I could remember exactly what it is, but it's that same thing that you're speaking to where you're trying and you're working so hard and you're, you're putting all this content out there and you're putting your all into this. And it's like, you're going, going, going. And then there's no fruits of it because God wasn't. And so I like anything that you're going to build like God has to be the center of it if you want it to be fruitful in the long run because when I came to Christ my whole YouTube channel was also I was doing the tarot cards and it was a lot of yoga and chakra teachings and just blatantly speaking against the church too I did a lot of that on my YouTube and I had to go back and take down all of those videos that I stayed up hours and hours and hours working on and I just I could never produce enough And then it was all for nothing because it all crumbled in my life of death that, you know, I was resurrected from anyways. Right. Right. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And I don't know if this is a verse you're speaking about specifically, but it's like Luke 648 was one of the first verses that ever just like when I was first started reading the Bible, like that just hit me. And it's about building your house on the, the foundation of Christ, you know, and if when a stream comes and it breaks, like it's going to, the house is going to crumble. You know, yeah. but if it's built on Christ, it's going to be able to withstand the storm or the stream, you know, and that was like one of the, because I was rebuilding my life on him, you know, and so that that verse just was like one of my favorites and just always spoke to me so clearly. Um, because when I even look all the way back to when I was like losing my father and experiencing all that grief and praying out, my foundation was just crumbling, right? And then I was trying to build my foundation on this false light, basically, in the, in the new age. Um and it, like you said, it didn't produce any fruits. And um, yeah, so when I started like the crystal thing, we were talking about that. And it was the last thing that I like threw out. I watched this video when I was like kind of being saved and still reading the Bible, but I had kept them because I don't know, I was just kind of like holding on to them. Um, and yeah, I watched this video that was like, they said a prayer at the end of the video. And it was like, if there's anything that anybody is still holding on to, mm reveal to them what it is you want them to let go of and during that prayer I it was clear that the crystals were what I needed to let go of Uh like you said too like it it is an idol and maybe not everybody uses them to like do energy healing or things like that but for me it was like when I was like because I was so deceived by it and because I was using them so regularly like even like doing things like yoga and stuff like that I had to completely stop you know, like I had to completely stop even with like the tarot, like I just one day I did a reading on like my tarot Tuesday, I would go live and do them. And after that, one of the girls that was being I was following on Instagram was being saved by Jesus, she posted this link on her YouTube or on her stories. And it was a YouTube video. And it's called free Adam third. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's by this pastor, um, Spencer Smith, and life changing. That wrecked my world. It's like a two hour video. I highly recommend anyone who's watching to go check it out. Like, especially if you're into new age things or you're mm-hmm. coming out of new age, check out this video because it completely wrecked my world. And like, I did that Tarot Tuesday. I finished my reading, saw this link right after I finished my reading. And that was the last time I ever did a tarot. Wow. Reading. That was the last time I ever touched my tarot cards. God's really. Time- yeah and at this point like this was like in november so i had already spent a couple months watching people come out of the new age being saved by jesus and i was still resistant to it and i was like having my pride and i was like no i'm not giving it up you know but then i was having those experiences where i just i felt lonely and i felt sad and i felt like no matter what i was doing it just wasn't enough and 
I was just feeling depressed and and but it was in those moments too like at that time I started to really feel the presence of Jesus Christ like literally I just saw him sitting in my face like it was so clear and I could feel his presence like there was no denying it he was so gentle but at the same time I could feel the presence of the enemy attacking me because I was like Christ was like I love you I want you like he's so gentle and calming that he was calling me to him but at the same time the enemy was like so obnoxious and he was yeah. like just make he would fill me full of doubt and make me question myself and you know like that is the enemy is yoga so, against god or something i guess i don't know much about yoga or do yoga so yoga can kind of i was just thinking about this too because a lot of people see it more as like fitness but for me when you're doing certain yoga poses like for example the warrior poses you're literally uh yoking yoga means to yoke you're yoking your soul with another with spirits uh different gods or goddesses in that uh like hindu religion like um, that's so it, it's built on yeah and so it's it's a form of idolatry that's all it is you know so it's an idol um and so it's like worshiping other gods and as christians we are meant to only worship one god and that's jesus christ and so mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a lot of yoga sometimes can be seen as fitness. I still do stretching, but I had to yeah. kind of, I had to stop. Like I said, I had to stop for a while because I was so deceived and I was doing my warrior poses every day. And I was doing, um, you know, like, yes, I was just really into the the, the meditation aspect of yoga mm -hmm. and like all these breath works. And it was, it was linking me up to these demonic spirits. Um, I would say because, that's the dangerous side of it would be the meditations and the breath works. I have this same conflict, and I think that's a really great question. I think it was yeah. Sienna, Sienna that yeah. asked. Um, so, you know, I think it goes back to the adultery com component of, like, we're going to be convicted about different things, yeah. like different things that if you were putting this before God, God yeah. is going to convict you of that specific thing. Like, you know that you need to give up this thing when you start spending time with God because he reveals that to you. For me, like, like it's wine sometimes, you know. Okay. Like alcohol was, was a thing that I was always going to to comfort me. And I'm really right. struggling. Like, I'm still struggling with that because it's such a mm -hmm. social norm, you know. And right. sometimes you want to, like, bond with people. But right. I put alcohol before God for so long. And so that's one of those things where that can be an adulterous relationship me with yoga this is like um this is still one that i i haven't necessarily been super convicted about because i guess i would say the meditation component and the breath work that yes i was convicted and i don't do that part but i still every morning i just have such an achy body you know if if i'm following a youtube video of somebody that is new age in which i can tell that the one girl that i still watch is she mm -hmm. still does the ohms and all this yeah. i like jump up and i cut the video off before it gets to that part so yeah. i don't know i guess it kind of depends on like where you are yeah. that that's my approach with it it's like i don't engage with the parts that i'm specifically convicted on or i've yeah. specifically been given discernment to not go there yeah. with with certain aspects if that makes yeah. sense. for me too it was like and I just started like stretching within the last, like maybe the last month again. Um, and I just know what poses, like, I just don't do certain poses anymore that I know are, that have convicted me personally, that I know are attached to that certain like um, Hindu practice. So um, yeah, I still do stretching. I feel you, like I have to move my body. Like, yeah. oh, I get so stiff, especially like I, I like to work out too, you know, like I like to go for jogs. So I need to stretch my body. Like, so it was kind of hard for me at first to like, okay, I can get back into stretching, but these are how, this is how I need to stretch now and, and kind of leave out all the other stuff. And I, when I used to do yoga, I was really into it. I would get like a buzz. I would get like a high, mm. you know, I would get this high what from it. What is that? What is that? Yeah, that, that to me is like the chi or it's the energy. It's almost like the Kundalini rising. See, I would, I would get this like buzz and I would really feel it like in my, in my pineal gland my third my third eye right and that's where that's kind of like the whole idea of yoga is like you're kind of connecting with the the universe or the this oneness of consciousness and I just was really into that consciousness yeah. and and I was connecting with what like this Christ consciousness and it just it was all false like it's all false light and that's the hard thing too because I think you were talking about just a little bit ago of like 
there's people that are like they claim themselves as Christians, but they're like maybe doing the tarot or they they have the crystals or whatever they're doing. Um, and a lot of people aren't connecting to the biblical Christ. Okay, they're connecting to the antichrist that's presenting itself as Christ, right? That's yeah. why it's so tricky. And that's why it's so deceiving is because he's kind of perceived as this hippie go with the flow, like, like, you know, like he's seen as this like new age Jesus. There's a completely different, uh, yeah. you know, there's a difference between the new age Jesus and the biblical Jesus of the Bible. <laughs> I mean, and when you start reading the Bible, you're like, wow, like, okay, I see clearly <laughs> these two different, versions of what christ is it's like new age kind of picks out what they like about christ Mm -hmm. from the bible and leaves out the part of like sin and and repentance and you know like really like sanctification and laying yourself down but they have counterfeits for it which is things like shadow work or you know like ego deaths you know that could be kind of seen as sanctification or shadow work is kind of like a counterfeit of um repentance you know and you know laying those things down and yeah, Pilates is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I don't that is really that good topic, to core. I don't want to push that topic too much, but maybe I do need to think a little bit more about that, like trying something like Pilates, because I know that yoga buzz that you're that you're talking about. Mm. And you know, as baby Christian, it's like there's still a lot that we're figuring out. And, mm. you know, it's a, a journey. I like the phrase, well, salvation happened in a moment sanctification happens over a lifetime and God continues to smooth out our edges and show us more and more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like he continues to reveal like himself more and more. And like, I feel like we just grow closer to him and closer to him. And like the more we're growing closer to him, the more we're being convicted of the things, you know, that, exactly. and that is a, that is a process. Like, and there's like no shame. I want to say that here. Like if you find yourself like doing something like for me, I would also do a lot of sensual dance in new age. I was really into this, mm-hmm. like, you know, self pleasure and all this stuff. And like, I was being convicted yeah. of this. Like I was, I would do it. And I was like, and I would hear, like, I would feel and hear the Holy spirit saying like, you don't need to do this, you know, like, please stop doing this, you know, like, but it was always gentle. He, uh, the Holy spirit, Jesus Christ will never make you feel shame. Like he, but he will convict you and you'll feel like this almost, Oh, it's one of my favorite verses too. I, um, in the Bible where it talks about like it produces a godly grief which leads into repentance. And I can't think of what it is. I want to say it's like Colossians three verse ten, maybe, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> wow, like, you you took a shot though. You might be close. I don't know it. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> okay. Yes. I wish I I can't look it up because it's on my phone. But mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, that's what it kind of did to me is like I would just be doing these things, um, like these still new age practices because it was I had to kind of like wean myself off of it because like these were habits that I had formed and yeah. I had done it for so long that I was like, you know, still doing the yoga poses, still doing the meditation, still doing um just other things like the self pleasure kind of things like that. Mm-hmm. Like I was you doing that to manifest whatever yes. I wanted. You know, <laughs> like I want to ask you because you know a lot of people will be doing these things and not understand like like why it's bad, like why they have to give it up. Like it seems like something so innocent. Like for instance, inner child healing, um, stuff like this. It sounds very innocent, but we know you know Satan can twist things just a little bit, and it's a slippery slope the minute you start to believe a little lie and just how quick you can tumble. But I don't know, maybe you can speak to that a little more about like why like the sensual dancing and stuff like this, like how it's actually dangerous for our soul because of what's happening at a spiritual level. Right. Yeah. So basically those things are like kind of tied into like the sensual dance for, for example, like, and it's more like, it's more like the energy you're kind of connecting to. Whereas like when I was doing the central dance, I was really connecting and I would call upon goddesses. It was a form of idolatry. So I would be calling upon these goddesses like Isis or um, Kali Ma. And I was like using, Mm -hmm. I would allow, I was giving them consent. Every time I would call upon them, I was giving them consent to link up with my spirit and to dwell within me. I was giving consent to demons to dwell within me. And they were leading me in this lustful way. 
lust. I was lusting after my own self. Yeah. And I was just like obsessed with my own body and like my, like, and I was posting naked pictures of myself on my yep. on Instagram or I was like <laughs> sensual, sensually dancing on Instagram, you know, like that, those kind of things. God does not want you to do that. You know, yeah. like, he, he loves you so much and you are a pure child of him. And that's, that's leading you into bondage. It's bondage. Um, and so it can give you this, like, that's what I thought it was empowering me. And I thought it was freeing me, like, especially in regards to my body image. I was like, I'm so free. I can share my body on the, on my naked body on the internet. That's so liberating. Like, yeah. like in that, and Satan will make things like that feel really good. It feels yeah. good to do those things. You get that little high. And that's what a lot of like new age is. And that's why so many, I see so many addicts are really drawn to new age is because like if you've suffered from any kind of addiction, you're really going to be lured by new age because it's, and it's an addiction, um, getting yourself into these elevated states of bliss, like through doing the central dance and feeling so connected to like your sensuality. And it tells us specifically in the Bible that in the end times, people will be lovers of self, you know, yes. rather than lovers of God. And we are, it's worshiping ourselves and we're doing that sensual dance and we're like, we're idolizing ourselves, you know, we're lusting after ourselves and we're like basically worshiping ourselves as God. Um, yeah. So that's where I started to feel very convicted. <laughs> I was just like, oh my, like, what am I doing? Like at the time, like you said, it feels so good. It feels like it's pure. It felt like it was liberating. And empowering. It, yeah. yeah. It felt like it was bringing me closer to God. You know, that's what I thought, but it was actually leading me further and further away from him, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that can be so hard for people because it does feel good. And, but you, in new age and in this culture, and in this society, we worship, we idolize our emotions. We mm -hmm. idolize our feelings, you know, and we think our feelings are it, that we yeah. should listen to them. Like, follow your heart. I always was teaching in new age, like your heart is your internal GPS and your emotions are your GPS. Listen to them, you know? And now I'm like, no, your emotions, especially if you haven't been born again in the Holy Spirit, your emotions are going to be deceitful. And Satan plays on your emotions. He manipulates your emotions. He's a master manipulator. And if you've been emotionally abused, like with narcissistic abuse, hello, that's something I suffered from mega from my parents. Like, and yeah. we just live in a narcissistic society and so, so many of us are so used to being emotionally and uh, narcissistically abused that we can't even see that when it's happening, you know, because we yeah. see it as a form of like normal behavior, you know, and so we can't discern when we're being manipulated emotionally, especially, and Satan will emotionally manipulate you. He'll get you like into these states of despair and like make you hate yourself. And like, especially if you struggle with self-harm or anything, you know, like he's really going to yeah, he's going to play on your emotions. Like if there's something you're struggling with, whether it's a relationship or, um, you know, it's self-image, like he's going to make you feel really bad about yourself. He's going to make you believe that people hate you or that you're no good or that you're worthless, you know? And then that leads you into, this is where I got really into the inner child healing. And I started doing these things because I thought they were helping, but it was like, it was almost like it was bringing me into this high you know, and I would feel these really high emotions of bliss and excitement and joy. Whereas Christ, and this is where you can really tell the difference. Christ is steady. He's even, even, he's even keel. He is the same today, tomorrow, and yeah. forever. He's unchanging. He's unwavering. Whereas Satan, it's like, you can go on this emotional roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like he can get you all worked up or make you feel bad about yourself. But then you go to these, you go, cause he is like, He'll give you the, the, the problem, but then he'll also give you the solution. Mm -hmm. And that solution are these new age practices that get you into this high and you're feeling this elevated state and then you crash back down, you yeah. know, and then you get really high again, you know? So I always see it as like an addiction, you know, but yeah. it's keeping people hooked. I never know, because... thought of it like that, but that's exactly what's happening. It's like, yeah. he gives you the problem and then he also gives you a temporary solution so that makes you need So you to have to keep coming. Yes. Uh-huh. It makes you keep, it makes you dependent. And one of the things I learned, because this is so important too, is I was codependent. This is like why, and I was codependent on people to make me feel good. So instead of relying on other people to make me feel good, I started relying on these practices to make me feel good. So if I was mm -hmm. having a bad day or, and that was called shadow work in new age, you know, so 
you know, when I was having a bad day, I would really rely on these practices, you know, to make me feel elevated, you know, and now it's just like Christ is so steady. He's so like, he's just this pillar, you know, (laughs) he's that foundation we were talking about. And from him, everything flows. Like, I used to feel this emptiness, you know, I used to feel this emptiness and I would try to fill it up with all these practices Hmm. and, and he fills it all. Like he is the living water, you know, and I was thirsty and you know how, like, you know, that term, like being thirsty, like kind of like (laughs) in like the new age of like, kind of like putting, you know, seeking, like you're seeking like these, you're seeking men or you're seeking like one night stands or you're seeking this sexual, like you're thirsty, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, we need Jesus, you know, we're thirsty for him, you know, but in the new age, it can kind of totally twist it and be like, you know, get into all this eroticism and this sensual yeah. dance and, you know, like put your naked body online and that's, what's going to fill you or it's going to like make you feel good. And it's just like, it does, it does temporarily posting, you know, it makes you, gives you a little bit of a boost. You yeah. know, when somebody likes your picture of your naked body, you know, you're like, oh, but yeah. you're like essentially selling your soul out yes. and you don't even realize it until like you're depleted yeah. and like, there you are like empty and broken. Like you think that you're, you think that you're like, we talked about empowering yourself and healing mm-hmm. and all these things, but it's literally all just a, an illusion. And you're adding, like you said, more and more trauma, more and more trauma onto the trauma that you already had. And you don't realize it until you do <laughs> right yeah and like and that's the thing too is that I want to share is like when it's your time it will be your time you know like I can't force you all I can do is all we can do is share our testimonies you know like we can't force anyone to come out a new age but we can share how dangerous it is and it is spiritually dangerous and uh, and it, it can seem so pure you know it seems like it's not that bad it can't be that harmful but it's not until like your eyes until the scales are removed from your eyes that you do see that it's spiritually dangerous you know so yeah. you can see it too when you look at our pictures before christ like when we were in stage to our pictures now what we look like now like when you're <laughs> spending a lot of time with satan and the demonic yeah. you start to look like it and when you start to oh. spend time with Christ you start to look like him too 180 180 like I love your before and after pictures oh yeah and that, that's so funny too because when I see those pictures of before now when I look at them I'm like you're filled with demons <laughs> like that's that's what I look like like there were demons in me and that's one of the reasons I relate to like Mary Magdalene in the Bible is because she had so many demons in her you know and I relate to her so much but I was kind of worshiping her in the new age but yeah, I just recently saw this like video I posted when I was in New Age and I couldn't even watch it because I was like so disgusted. Like, I was just like, I can't, who are you? Where I got to this because like, yeah. I was on like a health journey and like when I first started like coming to Christ, like I was, like I said, I was very overweight. And then I went to this other extreme where like at the time I didn't see it, but I was so small, like the smallest I'd ever been. Like I was skin and bone. Like I look sick. Like, I looked so sick, and I thought I looked so good, you know? Um, But now I know that it was, you know, it was Satan, (laughs) you know, leading me astray, you know? Like, because he made me obsess over my body. You know, I was so obsessed with my body when I was in New Age. Um, Because at a time in my life, I was so, like, disconnected from it. Um, And now, like, you know, Christ is helping me have a healthy relationship with my body, you know, and... Yeah, because like when you're born in dysfunction too, like you're going to have so many like you're there's going to be disorder in your life. Like this is where we get like eating disorders or anxiety disorders is because we're born in dysfunction, um, and you know Christ really has to come in. <laughs> oh, thank you, so beautiful. <laughs> thank you, Stevie. <laughs> Praise Great. the Lord for giving me <laughs> eyes to see that. You know. Because when you don't have eyes to see it, you're not, you're always going to have this distorted image of yourself, you know, and Satan will play on that. And he'll make you think that you're ugly. He'll make you think that you're worthless. Like, and he'll play on that. He knows how to bait you. And then that's how he gets you sucked into everything. Like he gives you one little breadcrumb. And as soon as you take that breadcrumb, he's like, you're mine. I got you hooked, you know? Yeah. And yeah, he just keeps you coming back for more. It's never enough or is in Christ he is enough like he is it you know and you're just like you feel I was hungry speaking of like weight and like you know like I've always had this like binge eating disorder and like I want to binge and I want to eat I've always been so hungry so Mm -hmm. hungry 
um, and he is he's the bread of life you know he he satiates this hunger whereas the enemy he'll make he i know when the enemy is attacking me because he makes my gut feel like it's hollow like i feel like this mm-hmm. hollow and i can never feel it like i feel so hungry and that's i know that's what has oh. happened to me yeah like in childhood like i would seek comfort i needed comfort my stomach would feel hollowed out and so i would go to the cupboard right i would go to food to give me that comfort that i wasn't getting from my parents yeah. Um, and so this is a long held pattern that even in new age things, I couldn't heal myself, right. As a self healer, Christ is healing this within me now. Like this is something I'm working on is the binging. And like, I go to food to comfort me, especially like the more I grow, like that intimate connection, I have intimacy issues, like no other, um, from my childhood. And so when I feel myself getting closer and closer to Christ and that intimacy is growing, like I'll have this moment where like, I want to like run away from it almost like I don't feel worthy of it. <clears throat> and this keeps me in separation from God. And when I'm binging, instead of spending, instead of getting closer to him and like spending time in his word or whatever it is, like okay. that's when Satan will, he'll come in and he'll attack me and he uses food as a way to tempt me, you know? So that's something that wow. you know, Christ is like really helping me to heal. And he's like, <clears throat> he's just guiding me in different ways, you know? And like yeah. every time I obey him and I submit to him and I listen to him, it makes me feel connected to him. And that's all I want. Cause when I was seeking food as a child, I was seeking connection. I needed mm-hmm. connection and nobody was connecting yes. to me. Oh my God. This is like the chills. Like that's like a, that's a mic drop moment. <laughs> so you know, when you're feeling like way hungrier than, than you should, that that's a sign you need to come to God because you need right. connection. I'm relating this back to my alcohol thing too. <laughs> I come home and it like, Some days I just really want a glass of wine and I'm trying to like push past that and like see what's there because I start to tell myself these stories. I'm like, but no, I think it just sounds good. Like the taste of it would just, it just would sound good. Right. Like on ice, like, and I start to downplay it. I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. And then I'm like, just wait, like I get myself to wait an hour. Same thing with food, wait an hour. And then it's like, keep exploring that. Like what's really on the other side of that. Right. What is it that you're feeling that you don't want to feel? Right. And it, it, it is the intimacy. So for me, yeah, it, it was a social thing of wanting to, yeah. like wanting to feel close to people, but right. not really knowing how to do that and feeling awkward around people. Yeah. And like, yeah. I want to go there and I want to have those conversations and I want to get deep and I want to talk about God and I want to know what's on your heart. But when people don't have the capacity or maybe they're just afraid to do that, I feel like alcohol is a really common thing society uses because we want to feel close to each other and we just don't know how. Yeah, that was me too. And yeah, it's like being vulnerable. And I felt like back before, like I was got into new age, I was kind of like, the only way I knew how this is going to be maybe like sensitive subject, but like the only way I could like sleep with somebody was when I had alcohol, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, because I had so many fears of vulnerability of being seen and being heard for who I truly was. And the only time I could be vulnerable with somebody, especially in that regards of like, you know, really being physically intimate was when I was drunk. I mean, you know, and, and like, that's, that's like so common in our society. And like, it's seen as like just another thing that you do, you know? And so, yeah, I can see how it wants it, it, like that liquid courage is what people call it, you know, it mm-hmm. helps you be a little bit like to express yourself a little bit more, let go of your inhibitions, you know, and it is kind of hard to like show up vulnerably. And I notice that now, not necessarily like I will have some wine. I literally just had wine last night. So it's funny that you say that, like that you're talking well, about. So maybe that's it, something I need to take into consideration. Or maybe it's not adulterous for you, you know, maybe it's no, not, you know. Right. Yes, that's true. Yeah, where I'm not like, but sometimes I feel like maybe I do or like, when I choose to go to the wine, because I'm avoiding being with being with Christ, you know, like, so I have my own issues. Absolutely. And I think we will um, ever like we're, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just catching ourselves. I think that, right. was, you know, before before I knew Christ, I didn't know, like, I didn't know my limits. I didn't know when was too right. far and it have it goes back to discernment. I didn't have any discernment. And so it was just like a tornado. Like I was a <laughs> mess and everything in my way was going to be destroyed with it. And so, right. yeah. So now it's like, you know, when you have Christ and you have literally 
the Bible, what is that acronym? The basic instructions before leaving earth, but honestly, while you're on oh, earth too. I've never not, heard of that. No? No, but I like it. It's like a rule book. It's, you know, yeah. you have, it gives you more discernment. It helps you know. And I feel like now I'm able to catch myself. It's like, I might still stumble a little bit here and there, but I catch myself a lot quicker. I don't go stumbling down the mountain anymore. Right. Yeah. And for me too, like I've noticed that like when I do fall into temptation, because we are, nobody is perfect. The only perfect human that existed was Jesus Christ, you know? So we're all, we're all sinful by nature and that's okay. Like, but I've noticed that when I do fall into, into temptation, whatever that temptation looks like, I come to repentance way, way quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, like I ask for forgiveness way sooner. I say, I'm sorry, father. Like, you know, like I just had that intimate conversation with him, you know, and he is forgiving. That's what's so beautiful about him is he's graceful. But also there is a difference between like habitual sin and the sin that's covered in the blood of Christ, you know, and, you know, when we're habitually sinning, you know, that's just, that's a completely different experience from like when we're, we're living for Christ and we happen to sin, you know, like it's a very different experience. Like, um, and I think a lot of people are just living in habitual sin, but they don't know it. You know, they don't know that it's sin. I certainly did not know it. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of something like that's yeah. generational. You know, it's passed down from generation to generation until somebody, you know, comes to Christ. And yeah. then he breaks those chains, those chains of bondage that you're literally, we're born into sin. So we're born into bondage. And that's what a lot of people don't see is that we're all spiritually dead. We're all born spiritually dead. And it's not until we're born again in Christ that we're spiritually alive. And when I had that realization, I was like, wow, you know, because even when we're connecting to all those spirits, all those other spirits are spiritually dead. Jesus yeah. Christ is the only one that's been resurrected. He's spiritually alive, you know, and that would just hit me. When I heard that, I was like, duh. You know I, I love that you said that. <laughs> that hit me right in the face because yeah. it's. You know, because we are seeking like maybe like things like Buddha, like I was like I was connect I was associating Jesus with like I was equating him with Buddha or Krishna or Kali Ma or all these other goddesses. But all those when I realized that they were all spiritually dead and that he was the only one resurrected, mm -hmm. that made so much sense. And I was like, he is he's <laughs> he's not equal to them, you know, like exactly. he is God. He is, I believe that Jesus Christ is God, you know, so. But I didn't believe that. I used to just believe he was an ascended master, you know. <laughs> That's what yeah. people believe. Like, there's still, like, a sort yeah. of respect for him. Um, right. they, they know, like, he was a profound person historically, mm -hmm. but they just haven't had the chance yet to actually encounter him. And yeah. and that's another thing, too, is, like, he he decides when. And that's kind of a hard yeah. thing to come to terms with, is that, you know, by his grace, we come to realize we we come to know him at his timing and so mm -hmm. yeah yeah as much yeah. as as much as like we can share and like hope that everybody hears this and like wants to know him like yeah. you can you can call on him if you even have that desire in your heart like i believe that's him already stirring that in you you know yes. yeah. if there was yeah. anything else that you could share with somebody who is you know either in the new age or you know, starting to see, you know, that what they're, that the new age is not all that it portrayed itself to be. If somebody coming out of the new age, what piece of advice would you have? Okay, yes, I'll end with one of my favorite, like, realizations from being in new age and coming to Christ is that Jesus Christ knew when I got into new age, he knew that I was going to begin. He knew that I was going to go into new age and he knew that I was going to come out and he knew how he was going to use me. So I don't necessarily see like spending all that time in new age as uh, a loss of time or any, like, I, I don't see it as like a regret. I see that he was literally using me. Like he knew and he went in search of me. It's that parable from Matthew. I think it's Matthew 13, maybe with the lost sheep. Maybe it's not Matthew 13, but the lost sheep, go, he goes in search of the 99. He will leave yeah. all the people that have followed him and he will go in search of you. Like, so if you call out for him, if you're on the cliff, you know, you're on the cliff and you're hanging by a loose thread. That's what it felt like to me. And you're calling out to Jesus and you really want to know him. Like if you're just curious, even your curiosity will lead you to him. I've always been a curious person. So follow that curiosity. You know, if you call out to him, 
he will come in search of you. He's like, I hear you. I'm coming for you. You know, like he, yeah. he will come for you <laughs> as long as you're like seeking him too. You know, like it's, it's a relationship. That's one thing I want to say is like coming to Christ is not about necessarily a religion. It's about having an intimate relationship with him. And that's all he wants. He just wants a relationship with you. You're his beautiful child. Like he loves you. He loves your soul and he wants to be close to you. He wants to know you. He wants you to know him, you know? And I just think that like, if you're in new age and you're seeking all these things, like what you're really seeking is to know God. And there is only one way to God. And that is through, no one knows the father except for through me. So we can't know God. And I thought in new age that I was connecting to God, that that yeah. all these things I were doing were bringing me closer to God, not knowing that they were leading me astray. So the only way that you can know the one true God is through a relationship with his son. And if you, you know, you ask Jesus for that relationship, he will deliver. He wants to be in a relationship with you. Yeah. He loves you. <laughs> and I just wish that like, I knew that sooner, you know, that, that he was the answer, that he was the way, because it would have made my life so much more simpler you know but I tend to complicate yeah. things and so I understand why I got really into like the new age thing and um because it does kind of it tickles your ears um and Jesus he yeah. might not always like tickle your ears he's very direct you know he's very he's gonna cut through he's not gonna tickle your ears he's not gonna coddle you in your sin in order for you to grow closer to him he's going to kind of like he's loving and he's kind, but he has a wrath, you know, like he has anger, you know, and this anger is loving. I, I will say you. that. Protect yeah. He wants to protect you. And yes. he knows that these things in new age are leading you into hell for eternal damnation. And he so does not you. want you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He yeah. wants you in the kingdom with him. Like he's calling to you. And I know he's calling to so many people right now. So I just pray that like, if this reaches you and, that you're feeling any sort of call to him that just yeah lay your life down to him and he will he will he will work beautiful things because I've seen him do miraculous things in my life in such a short amount of time I was trying to do all these wonders and new age and for years and he's done so much healing and just a matter of like I've only been reading the bible for six months so I've seen him work in such a short amount of time like it's <laughs> like it's not it's not by your own works either and in new age you're only you're you're doing your own works. Yeah, it's through, awesome. it, yeah, it's so tiring. <laughs> it's so tiring. But through him, you know, it's just like through his grace. Like my all you have to do is have faith in him. It's seriously that simple. Just have faith in Jesus Christ and watch him do his thing. <laughs> that was the perfect way to close it. Thank yeah. you so much. Honestly, yeah. that was that was beautiful. And I just appreciate for you sharing all of that. I know some of that can be intimidating. To, to share so I appreciate your vulnerability because we're not alone like the more we get this conversation going there's so many people out there that relate to our story so that's how we found each other because yeah. our walk was so similar and it all happened yeah. so fast we've got we've gotten to see God move really quickly so yeah. I'm really oh, great how, how can people um stay connected with you um I know you have your Instagram your TikTok yeah. Do you have another platform yeah, I have, um, you know, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I haven't done a lot with my YouTube. I share some videos there, um, but a lot of it's a lot of, I have, I wanted to keep kind of like my new age stuff there just to see like the transformation. But yeah, I have a few videos. Uh, I share my testimony. So if you want to watch my full testimony that is on YouTube, you can find the link in my bio here on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I do most of my work here on Instagram. Um, share my blog and stuff there too so yeah you can connect with me just through ashley's testimony that's what it is on every platform so yeah. beautiful thank you for having me Michaela. yes it's so nice to talk to you thank you so much for watching if you like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button i do post every wednesday at 6 p.m so you don't want to miss the next one and until then i'll see you guys soon